Let us open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis 21. Isaac's birth, Ishmael's banishment. Isaac's birth, if Ishmael's banishment. Genesis 21 verses 1 to 8. Birth of Isaac, Sarah's joy. Verses 1 to 4. Few under the Old Testament were brought into the world with such expectations as Isaac. He was in this tap, in this tap of grass. That seed which the Holy God long promised and the holy men so long expected. He was born according to the promise and at the set time, at the set time of which the Yahweh had spoken, Yahweh's promised mercies will certainly come at the time uh, that he sets, and that is the best time. Isaac means he laughs or may smile, which means may God smile. And there was good reason for the name, as we see it in Genesis 17, verse 17, and Genesis 18, verse 2. Did you? 18. Abraham also obeys Yahweh uh, by circumcising his son on the eighth day, uh, on verse 4. This was God's command to Abraham and his covenant with him. Verses 6 to 8. The sin shifts to Sarah alluding to her laughter of unbelief when Yahweh announced that she would give birth in Genesis 18 verses 10 to 15. When the son of comfort is risen upon the soul, it is good to remember how welcome the drawing of the day was. When Sarah received the promise, she laughed with distrust and doubt. When God gives us the mercies we began to despair of, we should remember with sorrow and shame our sinful distrust of his power and promise when we were in pursuit of them. This mercy filled Sarah with joy and wonder. Yahweh's feathers to his covenant people are such that they surpass their own and others' thoughts and expectations. Who would imagine that he should do so much for those who deserve so little? May, nay, even those who deserve so ill. Who would have said that Yahweh should send his son to die for us, his spirit? to make us holy, his angels to attend us. Who would have said that such, such great sins should be pardoned, such mean services accepted, and such worthless worms taken into covenant? A short account of Isaac's infancy is given. God's blessing upon the nursing 
of children and the preservation of them through the perils of the infant age are to be acknowledged as the signal instances of the care and tenderness of the divine providence as we see it in Psalm 22 verses 9 to 10 Hosea 11 verses 1 to 2 Genesis 21 verses 9 to 13 Ishmael mocks Isaac verses 9 to 10 the Egyptian Agar again has a role in the narrative 14 years earlier Agar had given birth to Ishmael and for most of the intervening period Abraham had treated Ishmael, Ishmael as the heir. By this point, Ishmael is a teenager. Let us not overlook the manner in which this family matter instructs us not to rest in outward privileges or in our own doings. And let us seek the blessings of the new covenant by faith in its divine surety. Ishmael's conduct was persecution, being done in profane contempt of the covenant and promise, and with malice against Isaac. Yahweh takes notice of what children say or do in their play and will reckon with them if they say or do amiss, though their parents do not. Mocking is a great sin and very provoking to Yahweh, and the children of promise must expect to be mocked. Verses, to, uh, verses 11 to 13. At Sarah's demand that Ishmael be banished, Abraham is distressed, but he receives a direct word from Yahweh for the sixth time coming to the land of Canaan. Abraham was grieved that Ishmael should misbehave and Sarah demands so severe a punishment but Yahweh showed him that Isaac must be the father of the promised seed therefore send Ishmael away uh, send him away in case he corrupts the manners or try to take uh, the rights of E of Isaac. The covenant seed of Abraham must be a people by themselves, not mingled with those who were out of the covenant. Sarah little thought of this, but God turned around when she said, That is why. We must not be so annoyed at the harm you think other, others have committed. For Yahweh may use them for his own purposes. Genesis 21 verses 14 to 21. Ada and Ishmael are banished. They are relieved and comforted by an angel. Verses 15 to 16. Single mothers without the support of family or friends faced a dire plight. While Aga does cry out to Yahweh, it is the boy's cries that the Lord hears. This offers a special meaning to the fact that Ishmael means God hears, as it is said in Genesis 16 verses 11, 
and Genesis 21 verse 17, verse 17 here in this chapter. If Aga and Ishmael had behaved well in Abraham's family, they might have continued there, but they were justly punished by abusing privileges we forfeit them. Those who do not know when they are well off will be made to know the worth of mercies by the want of them. Verses 17 to 21. Even though Aga suffers, her need for support is met. Yahweh does not forget his promise to greatly multiply her descendants, the promise made in Genesis 16 verse 10. Yahweh has compassion on Agar's plight and becomes like a father to Ishmael. They were brought to distress in the wilderness. It is not said that the provisions were spent or that Abraham sent them away without money. But the war was spent, and having lost their way, in that hot climate, Ishmael was soon overcome with fatigue and thirst. Yahweh's readiness to help us when we are in trouble must not slacken but quicken our endeavors to help ourselves. The promise concerning her son is repeated as a reason why Aga should rouse herself to help him. It should engage our care and pains about children and young people to consider that we do not know what great use Yahweh has designed them for and may make of them. The angel directs her to a present supply. Many who have risen to be comforted go mourning day after day because they do not see the reason they have for comfort. There is a well of water near near them in the covenant of grace but they are not aware of it till the same god that opened their eyes to see their wound opens them to see their remedy paran 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 was a wild place fit for a wild man such as Ishmael. Those who are born after the flesh take up with the wilderness of this world while the children of the promise aim at the heavenly Canaan and cannot be at rest till they are there. Yet Yahweh was with the teenager. His outward welfare was owing to this. Verse 21, Ishmael is the ancestor, the ancestor of the Ishmaelites, a nation classified, a nation classified as Arab. Historical facts shows that Assyrian and Babylonian royal inscriptions and North Arabian inscriptions from the 9th to the 6th century before Christ, mentioned the king of Kedah as king of the Arabs and king of the Ishmaelites. Of the names of the sons of Ishmael, the names Nebat, Kedah, Abdil, Duma, Masa, and Teman were mentioned in the Assyrian royal inscriptions of tribes of the Ishmaelites. Medieval, medieval, med, medieval Arab genealogists divided Arabs into three groups. Ancient Arabs, tribes, 
First, the ancient uh, Arab tribes, tribes that had vanished and been destroyed, such as Ad and Tamud, often mentioned in the Qumran, the Qumran, as examples of God's power to destroy those who did not believe and follow their prophets and messengers. Egyptian historian Makrizi also says that Moses wiped out almost all non-Ishmaelite Arabs, such as Amalek and the Midianites, a nation descended from Abraham's son Midian in Genesis 25 verses 1 to 2. Second, pure Arabs of South Arabia, such as Amalek and Midianites, a nation descended from Abraham's son Midian in Genesis 25 to 1 and 2. Uh, let me say it again, I have a bit of confusion here. Second, pure Arabs in Saudi Arabia, descending from Katan, Katan. Uh, the Katanites are said to have migrated from the land of Yemen following the destruction of the Marid Dam, the Marid Dam, Dam. Third, the Arabides, the Arabized Arabs, the Arabides, the Arabides Arabs, the Arabs that have become uh, Arab of Center and North Arabia, descending from Ishmael the Elder, son of Abraham. Genesis 21 verses 22 to 34. Abimelech's covenant with Abraham. Verse 22, Abimelech, re, Abimelech re-enters the account. He arrives with his enforcer, Pichol, to sign a treaty with Abraham. The term Pichol means, uh, the term Pichol may be a title rather than a proper name. The same name is used in Genesis 26 verse 26 and Abraham's uh, of Abraham's minis, uh, Abraham's commander. So the uh, picture means uh, executioner. Verses 25 to 26 in contrast to Abraham's previous fear of Abim Abimelech he now boldly stands up uh, to this powerful king. Abraham brings up the matter of the well that Abimelech's servants had seized from him. Wells were of extreme importance to the semi-nomadic semi, semi people like Abraham. The Hebrew verb translated reproved implies that Abraham had to complain seven times. Verses 30 to 32, this passage concludes with uh, the man naming the well Be'er 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 Sheba. By granting Abraham rights to the well, Abimelech has made, has made it possible for Abraham to live there permanently and acknowledged his legal, legal right at least to war Abraham now owns a small part of the land Yahweh promised him. Verse 33, the planting of a grove. The planting of a grove, Abraham indicates by, by planting a grove, Abraham indicates his determination to stay in that region. The grove is meant to be a lasting landmark to Yahweh's provision and the focal point of Abraham's worship. It serves as an appropriate symbol of the enduring grace of the faithful God. Abimelech felt sure that the promises of God would be fulfilled to Abraham. It is wise to connect ourselves with those who are blessed of Yahweh and we should reciprocate 
kindness to those who have been kind to us. Wells of water are scarce and valuable in northeastern African countries. Abraham took care to, to have his title to the well a lord to present disputes in the future. No more can be expected from an honest man than that he be ready to do right as soon as he knows he has done wrong. Abraham being now in a good neighborhood stayed a great while there. There, there he made not only a constant practice but an open profession of his religion. There he called on the name of the Lord Yahweh as the everlasting God. Probably in the grove he planted, which was his place of prayer. Abraham kept a public worship in which his neighbors might join. Good men should do all they can to make others so. Wherever we sojourn, we must neither neglect nor be ashamed of the worship of Yahweh. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.